doing our fifth lesson so let's will start uh, from last lesson our previous lesson what do you think what we learn up to now anything you remember yes uh, pretty much uh, loads of things we studied about uh, basic um, mathematic mathematical accounting terms we for example uh, we learned about uh, ratios we learned about proportions percentages and um, also um, fractions along with that we also uh, studied different um, uh formula for example we studied uh, uh break even point target profit margin of safety change in components of uh, break even assets and um contribution uh and also we studied about the um uh the uh, averages that could be applied in certain um, situations and uh, also we studied about depreciation different types of depreciations that could be applied uh for example straight line method and uh, uh reducing method units of production and sum of reduced method so pretty much those of things well done great so uh, uh during last lesson we calculated our profit and loss as well budgeted sales budgeted revenue and we discuss you know revenues sales and turnover exactly the same there are no mm -hmm. difference between them and um uh we we did we discuss you know so many different sort of things you know we discuss numbers we discuss value added tax we discuss input and output tax uh we discuss about gst and things we discuss about transaction what is meant by accounting transaction and today we are doing lo5 which is called learning outcome 5 be able to apply statistical method or statistic methods which will to provide businesses and the management information so businesses and management so is a key focus we need to look around the data we need to look around different sources of the data how we can interpret and use in a business world so what these number in business and in a management perspective how these numbers and what sort of the information these numbers provide and we'll see today different companies financial statement will go through we'll go through what is the difference between data and information and how we can apply the data in in a decision making perspective in a management perspective within a business so today is our fifth lesson and uh, which we are doing and we are covering learning outcome 5 so what is the difference between data and information anybody knows so data is i think more uh, specifically about uh, numbers uh it's more accurate information could be a simple piece of sentence not uh, relating to specific numbers or uh, uh, factual statements uh yes data is more about raw information raw data which is raw facts no context just number and tax well then you very well mentioned daniel you okay yeah okay if any question ask me please don't not hesitate okay okay feel free we all here to just learn yes we are different we don't need to hesitate anything yeah okay so data with the context process, process data value added data we can as it we can organize it and we can analyze it these data and the data is like here data is 51007 what's the give it's a just a numbers yes no information with it when data process and proceed is become a valuable data and then we can use it like fifth of the 10th or 7th the date of your final exam of course not so we need to go through it's a data become information which will go through how data we can use it 
so first place data is very very important data is a raw facts and raw figure we use different software to interpret the data and convert into valuable information we are living in a data world where so much data is available online so much information big data concept data mining company those arrange the data a lot of information and uh, other legislation data protection no one else steal our data like Facebook we heard about yes yes sir. Data, data lost at other companies and elections and various things happen with the data so when we are entering our giving some data online we need to be very careful and the data protection and some legislation because everything is recorded somewhere in different part of the world so we need to be very careful data first thing is a data always data is a central thing here that give the basic yes yeah. then we can process it it's become an information so data provide the information then and when we have a information you have a really good information it's become our knowledge can onion yes we are moving to the different layers so it's become a knowledge when we have a knowledge first we need a data then become a information then become a knowledge and then we can take action yes we can apply it so data information knowledge and action is, is called data to action cycle which is quite good you know in a business we have a data a lot we have internal reports we have external reports we have a lot of you know history of commerce law um, cbr revenue um, hmrc here revenue tax offices they provide a lot of data company house stock exchange but depend how that data we can use or convert into the information useful and when we have the information it's become our knowledge we know this company shares what is happening in the real world then on the base of the knowledge you can decide either we want to invest in company we want to do business with that company so on the basis of this you know data information knowledge and then we can take action as a management perspective so financial data where what are the key sources of financial data where we can get the financial data what do you think so financial data can be soon can get could be seen from the uh, balance sheet and the other statements like uh, income state income statements income and expenditure statements balance sheet or budget cash flows over well then so we discuss about we normally prepare four types of financial statement we call profit and loss income statement second statement balance sheet we also call financial position third statement normally we prepare cash flow statement the fourth we call equity or shareholder statement so these are four types of statement and these take and provide us financial data so financial data is derived from many sources we process in many ways and used by many people unfortunate this meant by there are many chances of for errors capturing the right data at the right time processing it reliably and correctly and then sharing it to it in a timely fashion with the right people is a fundamental of the organization financial control so end of the day whatever and whatever organization we have financial data and financial control is very very important like pia uh, airline industry we'll say other companies we can say facebook or various other company so financial control is very important because um, maybe we learn in economics according to different school of thought one modern school of thought they said and very well mentioned neil robin he said is in his book modern school of economics we have unlimited wants we have a limited resources and we need to use these resources effectively we can use it only when we have a 
good you know financial control and we have a we know best alternative yes how we will spend how much we all have a limited resources yes we can't say we have everything whatever really we want so is the limit resources how we can apply them that's really matter so organization often have any question no sir no okay is other thing is very very important we need to look around the validity of the data how we can check the validity of the data so time time constraints could be uh, could be uh, could be one of the factors to check the validity of the data time constraint uh, for example how i how um, uh, updated or how old the data is for example the latest the data uh, the better would be the analysis of uh, financial data well then so that's quite crucial so financial data when we're looking the validity in terms of the time if we have a data of south korea um, korea of 1990 and we are going to set up business there and now it's a totally different world yes it's a good now 25 30 years so we need to look around how much we need at least you know last year two year three years old data not more than that because things so rapidly change nowadays so validity of the data we need to what are the source of the data the data where we got it is it source is authenticated because a lot of news carry on coming in the corporate world we need to look around the credibility of the data as well so which will any question no sir no sir so we can use it different types of the data to make the decisions uh okay if you don't mind just can i quick you know pick one call sorry is urgent was that fine okay so next that's fine now okay so next is we looking the financial data first we have a data then become an information and then become a knowledge data can be internal source within our organization and external source so what is meant by internal source so within an organization that that is you know uh, uh, held by the organization itself yes so your accounting system and other managers directly from your suppliers and directly from the customer and a uh, numerous personnel separate sheet all these are the internal source of the data we have a record you know our suppliers our customers and all these are the internal source of the data so that is quite in part part and term we use garbage in and garbage out so it mean the data we you we input if we don't have a right input we don't record the information correctly we not going to get the right out output as well yes so if we don't have a right base we can't get it the right information so at least mainly we need to be look around when we enter our it system uh, when first time we asking customer uh where do you live well, yes what start of the business you are in how often you travel all and any anything depends nature of the organization so we need to be record effectively when we record effectively ultimately help you know okay any question and external external source of data the other sources outside the organizations okay what those are uh, uh internet could be one of the sources most of the companies accounts are available on the internet nowadays uh apart from that we also have uh, 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 uh different third parties that uh, sell or make these uh, financial uh, data available to the interested people apart from that we also have company house and uh, other uh, uh, organizations that prepare these datas 
uh, uh, and um, make them available to the uh, interested people globally. Good, well done. So these are the different sources of the data and we can use it. Okay, so we discuss about data and information. We discuss internal and external source of data, financial reports, company house, stock exchange. Those are external, internal company reports and things. So those are the internal. So whatever information we are getting from internal or external sources, we need to be asked the question good information what sort of the things need to be contained within that data or information it's need to be up to date yes so as much up to date we can get it we will try we have to up to date second we need to look around that information is accurate accuracy of the information the data we are getting how much is accurate is it worth what purpose we are getting the data is it relevant yes so we need to check around the relevancy and then we need to ask you know sometime we are paying a lot of money to get the data but is the worth what is the worth of that data if we are getting the data of 1990 98 2000 but that was totally different that was outdated that was not update and we are paying money for it so we need to look around what is the worth of it to make the decision for the companies. So we need to focus on these points really. Reliability. So who is giving data this? Yes. How much is reliable that? Any question? No, sir and easy to understand and use if the data is a big numbers yes we have uh, so much data but is it what this represent is it people can interpret them and use them effectively that's really matter and meet the needs of the user if you're a marketing manager we need a data about about the customer, data about the taste, data about the branding, data about the advertising, data about the marketing campaign, data about the cost or the utilization of the time. So all these data we need to be look around. Is it the meet the needs of the user if we are a marketing department or marketing manager or if you are a HR, if you are a production. So we need all different sort of the data depend upon in which department, in which capacity you are working. Any question? No, sir. Okay. Next is when we have a data and financial data, it's help us to make the financial plan. Financial planning is very important in our organization. Plan is where we are, where we want to, and what we want to do. If we don't have a plan, we its plan is a sort of set nav. Yes provide the navigation system where you go with which path you know how this road that this way leads you and where so we need to look around uh, financial data and information which we can get is the income statement like we earlier mentioned balance sheet cash flow statement and we can get some data about the budget you know different types of the budget and we can look around some break even we can calculate we can make some lot of decision based on the data so these are all about sub help us fun it to prepare the future financial plan any question yes. okay sources of financial data internal and external we know now we can list them can we list them yes sir so oh, let's start first internal sources. Internal sources. So it could be a company's own accounts, a company's own uh, uh, financial accounts that has been prepared by its accountants. Okay, good. 
so we can look around uh, yes list to the financial information proceed within our organization and external financial information collected from other sources speak your account and other financial director if necessary in order to complete your list so internal source of financial data which is internal reports about customer about suppliers uh, internal accounts which we normally generate internal audit reports all these are internal source of data and external so external could be internet company house um, other uh, outsourced uh, companies that are uh, uh, involved in such data recruitment yes well done so these are all sort of external and in internal so sources of the data financial data indicator reliability can be internal audit report financial system design internal checks and control authority level complexity of accounting system financial reports culture within our organization yes so sources of financial data we can look around these and uh, we have a published account these are also if increase the indicator of the reliability of the data we need to look around and on the basis of this you know we can um, make various types of decisions okay next thing we are looking if you look at the learning outcome five especially we are covering today so between different types of business data represent and interpret the business data and determine and interpret summary statistics so these this is one of the learning outcome is all about which we'll go through now and we are discussing all about these learning outcomes so next is the financial ratios ratios come interpretation of the financial information and convert their ratios in the useful way the help businesses to make decisions so when we are looking uh, financial ratios are useful indicators of performance and the financial situation and most ratios can be calculated from the information provided by the financial statement and ratios can be used to compare between different years what is meant by benchmark the benchmark is uh, it's a certain uh, limit it's a certain uh, destination that a company reaches it could be a certain level a company well, reaches then. in its uh, business uh, functions or operations uh, yes like uh, it's a benchmark it's called key performance indicator or uh, is a standard or uh, it's a industry basically the industry as the average what getting yes so that's a benchmark industry benchmark or oh, like in a food industry we delivering average you know the food delivery after cooking maybe in two hours or in 60 minutes within three miles radius so that's a benchmark we can decide in term of time in term of cost in term of quality section level of customer so we can use different ratios as well okay so today we'll discuss some ratio those are very important in terms of the business world and we'll interpret them what these ratios meant by can you see the slides yes sir is it readable uh, yeah uh, yeah yes. okay so we can use ratios and ratio analysis these are different types of the ratios we use like uh, profitability ratios so we can use profitability ratios so profitability ratios uh, help us to decide how much company profit or loss the companies make during the year so first ratio is the profitability ratio these ratios measure the relationship between income and expenses and also profit and loss measure again the equity so we looking in term of how much investment we have how much profit we made yes how much expenses incurred 
So all these sort of things, you know, we're looking under the profitability ratios. Okay. The second is called liquidity ratio. Anybody knows what is meant by liquidity or liquid? So it's the ability of a firm in terms of uh, uh, cash, like how fast or how quick the firm can convert its assets into cash. Well then, so liquidity means the most liquid asset. It means those are near to cash or cash itself. Some asset we can convert it. Like if we have a stock in R, that stock we can convert into the cash quicker if that stock is less than one year old. Yes, that stock is normally stock in mean inventory. We can, and sometimes we have a prepaid. Prepaid mean we paid advance the money people we can ask them refund our money that says the liquid and liquidity is mean near to cash cash itself or any other thing which we can sometimes selling building is difficult it takes a while so that's not a most liquid account receivables debtors we it mean the people those owe our money we can give them discount we can are the, the money legally we're supposed to receive, we can give the letters to the bank and bank can give us, lend us money up to 80%, 60% depend upon our company reputation. So that's the liquidity we'll go through. Use of resources, what is meant by use of resources? What type of resources we meant to be? The resources are uh, basically the um, capital of the uh, organization that includes assets and liabilities both. So in this we could include our uh, current assets, fixed assets and all types of liabilities. Well then, so use of resources mean how effectively we applied the resources we have in the organization. Like, you know, we can look around 3Ms for a business, 3M resources means men, power, money, and material. So if we have a pound, how best well we have applied them and how the company is you know, performing it. So use of resources the ratios also called efficiency ratios. How quick we are receiving money from our customer, how late we are paying to suppliers, how quick you know we are converting inventory the stock into the finished good or how quick we are selling so if we have a stock we are putting in our keeping in our shop longer and longer it's been blocking your cash end of the day cash oh you want to be you earn less profit but if your stock regular selling and you converting into the cash quicker, you be, your business will be very viable. So you are very efficient because sometimes some organization here, even they are happy to sell the car, they bought it because the reason it, if they keep in their warehouse and their shops actually is cost them more because there is a holding cost involved. There is a time your money is a block, is opportunity cost is there. So we need to look around, use of resources effectively in our organization. Any question? No, sir. X ratio is called financial position ratio. We also call gearing ratio. Gearing. Okay, if we'll drive in high gear, what will be happen? Sir, the speed would be faster and uh, uh, yeah, the speed would be faster. But high, <laughs> high gear mean high risk? Yeah, yeah, but that's what I was about to say that high gear means that if you know the car is running at the really uh, higher gear like fourth or fifth, it's, it would be really difficult to slow down its uh, speed uh, abruptly. We'll either um, get into some kind of accident or you know kind of uh, incur some kind of other troubles. 
So just yep. like the same way in, in organizations, high gearing means high risks are involved. Okay, so in our organization, high gearing means if you highly borrow money, yes, and the highly interest, and the, you have a lot of 80% of your companies borrowed, and you have only 20% of your own capital, it means when you're borrowing more, you're putting yourself at risk. So we need to look around the financial position. So more borrowing money is mean more risk. So more risk mean the organization is going to lose more. Any question? Yes, sir. So which will go through profitability ratio. We can calculate gross profit divided by revenue. Then we have ratios operating profit, operating profit divided by revenue. These are all the formulas there. We don't need to use all, but I put it there for the sake of if earning per share, how much is the number of so profit after tax divided by the number of shares as a company we are holding. We can find uh, profit from operation and divided by total asset. Daniel, any question? No. Yes, no. No, no. Yes, yes, no, no. Okay, no. Okay, so let's, you know, next uh, liquidity ratio, current asset divided by. What is meant by current asset? Anybody knows? Yes, sir. These are the assets that have a life less than of 12 months. Well, then, and current liability? Yes, sir. These are the liabilities that are to be paid within 12 months within 12 months so which we have to settle within 12 months we can call them short term or current liability and those help us liquidity position of the company so which will go through asset test ratio is also part of the liquidity ratio most liquid thing so sometimes stock is not most liquid because sometimes maybe that stock we have we can't sell it so we look around total current asset, cash, prepaid, debtors, and we can take out the figure of inventory and we can divide by current liabilities, which we can calculate our most liquid asset test ratios. Use of resources, it means how many, like is one of the ratios we can calculate inventory divided by cost of sales. So cost of sales, uh, it means how, how quick inventory we are converting into the finished goods. Raw material which we have, we are making things how quicker. So this we can go through trade receivable days, how many days we are receiving the money from our credit customer. Trade payable, how many days we are paying to our supplier. Normally receivable days supposed to be less than the payable days. Why? What do you think? So because Anything normally else? because normally when we have to pay in a longer time span the interest rates are at, are likely to get higher and the um, supplier might be reluctant to uh, uh, lend us more products over borrowed money okay trade receivable why we need to receive quicker from the customer because it's better to receive our due amounts from our customers as soon as possible. Um, these are yes. the amounts that are needed to be paid by our debtors. Those are the customers. So we need to get the money from them by time. Okay, so trade receivable means our debtors are custom, credit customer. So if we we'll receive, let's say, you know, my receivable days 30 and my payable days to supply is 50. So it means 20 days I'm keeping, I'm 20 days is my uh, safety net. Yes. So I'm saving for myself 20 days. If I don't have a cash, so uh, because I'm receiving in 20 days from my customer and I'm paying suppliers in 50 days. So it means 20 days is my safety net so because I have a cash, yes? So always we need to negotiate with the supplier to pay the longer period of time, but I will always look around and chase our customer to pay us quicker as soon as possible. 
so that will help us to improve the cash flow any question no sir so which we will go through now some ratios calculate these ratios so we'll try some ratios i'll show you some financial statement okay i'll send you this uh, template template we normally use is a formula there with i'll send you a formula sheet as well uh, because according to your learning outcome, we just need to interpret it, that information. Yes, interpretation is quite important instead of, you know, we, we're not doing purely, it's a, not a purely finance, it's a sort of, you know, how we can use the, some figures in, in a business. So we're just looking. So one is called, uh, Profitability ratios, gross profit divided by sales. We can calculate different company. We can calculate profit from operation divided by sales that we call revenue, return on capital implied and all these ratios gaining debt divided by equity. Ratios we can calculate is mean, you know, show that how much debt we have, how much equity mean our investment, our own capital. In a business interest cover ratio, it means how many times the money we paid in terms of the interest or profit is higher than the interest. And the liquidity ratio, we discuss, you know, how much liquid asset we have in within our organization. So these are the ratios we can use it. We have a different company's financial statements. So, uh, I'll show you first goal next. Next financial statement we have a Mark and Spencer, quite popular world brand. So the their ratios help us. I dig these reports, you know, sometimes finding information. So is here when we look here. So now if we look at this financial statement is called consolidated. Consolidated means we have a two, three subsidiaries or many subsidiaries company. All the figure we can combine and we can consolidate of 52 weeks figure and that is a these are the figures there so like 2015 and 16 how much was our sales revenue in 2015 and how much we have now what do you think is it increase or decrease so it has increased so we can take the difference and how many millions increase can we take the difference two figures We'll see how much different. So we have one double seven point one. One double seven point one million increase from last year to this year in term of the sales. Sales revenue and turnover is the same thing. So when we'll let's do the difference between cost of sales last year this year they too have increased is increase how much is the increase two seven two four 67.8 67.8 so if you want to see as a percentage divide on the base year this figure yes divided by 
and times by 100 and you can find how much percent is my increase are from last year to this year how much percent Hello, we know. Are you there? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Just just a minute. No, take your time, sir. So what was the formula? Could you please repeat? Since we have the different. Oh, this this one we just looking. Um, okay, okay. This one you know we you already find the difference last year cost of sale and this year. Yeah. Yes. Divided by the last year. Yes, the figure. So we can time by hundred. We can find as a percentage because you okay. found as a million. Yes. Okay, 67.8 divided by 2656.4, right? Yes, and yes, times by 100. Be, it would so be 2.55%. 2.55% our cost of sale is being increased compared to the last year. Yeah. And we can do exactly with the sales as well because if is our sales is increasing higher percentage than the cost of sale it means our gross profit is increasing more yes? yes okay let's we'll do the gross profit divided by sales revenue figures let's see 2016 1452.7 divided by 4176.9 It is zero point three four seven seven nine times by hundred. Did we? Oh, no. Thirty four point seven seven. So thirty four percent is our gross profit. Yes, every yes. worth of the pound we are selling the things thirty four pence. We are earning the profit on it. Yes, gross profit, not a net profit. We have some other expenses as well, yeah? Those are not directly, so those are indirect, which is quite good, yes? Every pound worth of the things we are buying it, yes? We are, we are earning 34 pence profit on it. So it means it's costing us 64 pence going towards cost, and 34 pence is getting the profit in the net. What do you think? Is good? Yes, sir, it is good. So look, these big companies is earning, but they have so many overhead costs. So when we look there, let's we'll go through the profit from operation sixty six 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 point eight divided by forty one seven six point nine. This figure triple six point eight divided by four one seven six point nine times by hundred is giving me my net profit percentage. That is fifteen point nine six. So fifteen point nine six. So fifteen pence are fifteen percent we are earning net profit. So thirty four percent was gross profit. And it may rest around 19% is going by our head cost. Those are indirect expense. Hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. 
So you maybe, just, maybe as a managers in the company, we need to focus how we can reduce our overhead. Maybe not from 19 to we can down to 12. Yes, it will save. It mean our net profit will increase as well more. Yes. It makes sense. Yes. It will outsource, you know, something IT department or other that will help us to reduce our expense. So always the financial people, they are looking these things and these numbers itself, you know, speak a lot. So today we learn about different ratios. And uh, let's will do a bit quiz. We are ready, yes? <laughs> it's all about the ratios, okay? no test believe me it's no test okay no recording test it's it's a just just clear our concept huh? come on Okay, just few questions there. So let's we'll start. Uh, financial ratio uses and user of financial ratios. So first thing, which which of these is a liquidity ratio? Current ratio. Well done, correct. Okay, next, which group of ratios may the firm's ability short term obligation? We discuss short term liquidity ratios. Well done. Next, which group of ratios need us focus in term of their use? Use of resources. We discuss something which we other names we can call financial efficiency ratios. So wasn't it about the efficiency? Which group of the ratios with nearest focus? N narrow mm. narrow focus, yes. Yeah? Okay, that's a major focus which we'll go through. Which which ratios will most interest to the bank? Bank have a more interest on it. Is it profitability Six. ratios, financial ratios, liquidity ratios, or shareholder ratios? I think liquidity ratios. But ratios assess financial position by comparing two sets of linked data. Which measure of return in particularly important capital intensive business? Capital intensive is, I think, um, ROCE. Well, then return on capital implied. Okay, which group of ratios measure how effective the firm uses asset? Financial efficiency ratios. Well done. Which group of ratio related to the profits to sales and investment? Profitability ratios. And so which of the following all basis comparing the ratios except which one?
I don't get this question. The following are the basis for the comparing ratio, except which one? All other are, which one is not? Uh, comparison with maybe employees? I'm <laughs> not sure. Well, that's correct, yes, because all intra company even twice their work. Okay, the main sources of information for the ratio analysis is the firms. Financial accounts. Or maybe management. Not so sure. Confused between these two. Financial is more because that's health ratio. Well done. So 90%, even 100% because one question was yes. Not clear. Yeah. Not clear. So well done because that's a narrow yes. Okay. okay any question? Yeah. No, okay. sir. Just just uh, wanted you to uh, upload today's lecture uh, on Moodle. Apart from today's lecture, also uh, previous lectures on this topic. Uh, yes, all the topic, all the lectures up to now. Up in all the previous lectures except today on Moodle now with the recording with all the handouts and I'm going to upload this one as well for you. Okay. okay. So which will go through during our next lesson. Lesson six is more about the probability and a bit you know will um, equation and things huh? and we'll discuss assignment as well. Have you done the question which I gave you last lesson? Uh, sorry, it was uh, <laughs> so. Okay, try, okay. We, I think so we finished one or two tasks la last lesson, assignment brief ones. So try if any question asked me and uh, during next lesson we'll go through assignment. Okay. Okay, okay. so today we learn about all about the data, interpretation of data, and how we can use the data effectively in a business. And uh, these are all, we can use the statistics, already different statistic as a percentage. We learn about mean, more averages, yes. So these are these are industry averages as well and the ratio. These are all useful to make the decision in a business. So which will surprise everything. Okay, have a nice weekend and I'll upload this recording online as well for you. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, enjoy. Thanks. Bye.